Larry catches the biggest bass. Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So for the past probably four hours this morning, I've been out trying to catch fish on topwater lures. I don't want to spoil what that is because that video will be coming up here soon, but that did not work at all. So we ditched that. We're going to save that for another day when we have another morning with a little bit better conditions than we have right now. Um, Right now we are going into Walmart and I've been thinking, of, I've been thinking about y'all a lot and I have, you know, there's a few new people that have joined the channel this year and I was like, man, you know, the best feeling is like when you get paid when you're younger and you have like, all right, I can budget 20 bucks in and i can go spend 20 bucks in walmart i just got inspired to go do like a 20 dollar walmart cheap as we can go bass fishing challenge just to go catch a whole bunch of bass and just have a good time so that's what we're coming in here to do stay tuned and we'll figure it out together all right so this is going to be a top water less video just because i've fished top water and also we're out at the middle of the day today so it's probably going to be like a worm like a moving bait but i don't know because i want to pick them when we get hopefully i have a pretty good fishing section to stock because I went to a Walmart the other day and they did not. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. All right, so we have pretty much this whole aisle right here to put our $20 budget in. Anything that catches my eye. We've done a few challenges in the past with rattle trap. This is always such a hard decision. I'm trying to, I like to kind of have an idea. Ooh, I see fritz sides. I, Walmart didn't always sell these fritz sides. We're not gonna get one of those though. That's $10, that's half of our budget. All right, so I mean, we have soft plastic options. We have, Frog, spinner baits, crank bait, yeah, pretty much anything. We have all of our options right here in front of us. All right, so, so our first lure choice is gonna be a lure I used to throw a whole bunch, but I've kind of gotten away from it here in the past couple of years. A fluke. These flukes used to be like a go-to lure. I'm pretty sure I caught my first bass on a white fluke with the chartreuse tail. I'm pretty sure like my first bass ever, which is probably five or six years ago. But we're gonna get these as our first one. Also, they're four bucks for a 10 pack. So. That's gonna be our first lure. And then we're probably gonna do some type of stick bait, but also they have the Berkeley power worms down there and I've been catching a really big bass on those. It's like a big curly tail worm for some reason, it's just been working for me. But we're trying to keep it budget and I like to be able to get like maybe four things, but that's kind of pushing it because fishing lures, they're going up, they're getting up there. I love a Walmart branded crankbait like this one right here. Yeah, I like that. Or they have red. The sexy shad, sexy shad. Walmart crankbait. Okay, so we'll say we're at seven dollars right now. That still gives us thirteen, which we're doing pretty good on this budget. Might be able to afford that frit side. We got flukes. We have crankbait. Do we get a rattle trap? I think we have to get a rattle trap. That's that's a pond staple. You can take that anywhere. I'm not really sure where we're gonna go yet. Also, we could probably go Walmart branded rattle trap if they have that. Oh yeah. These right here, the cotton cotton cordell. I used to get those and absolutely tear up bass just because they were like a few dollars cheaper than the other rattle traps. Okay, so that's another four dollars. So we're at eleven. So we have nine bucks left. Do we go all out on this last lure and like, you know, buy something worth nine dollars, or do we try to piece it out? That fruit side is over there, but I told y'all we weren't gonna get a fruit side. So I've gotten a couple of comments from y'all telling me that I need to try the Walmart like Senkos, but it doesn't look like they have them. Um, if they had the power bait, I promise y'all I would get the power bait. I get a mat, pack of Max Fit and Generals and we would catch, I think there's eight that come in a pack. We would catch eight bass in probably eight minutes with those, but that's how much faith I have in them. Um, they don't have any Generals in here. We will, ooh, we could get a swimming worm. Is it coming up on swimming worm time? We're gonna get a pack of yum dingers for the one time. Yeah, we can do those weightless. Okay, so that leaves us six dollars left to go. Um, that six dollars, I feel like we should get a spinner bait, like a white spinner bait. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Uh, it might not be the most spinner baity esque day, but this will be our home run lure for the day. Ooh, yeah, this is gonna be our home run lure for the day. Look at what we picked out. So this selection right here, I'd say we stayed pretty budget. This is kind of a home run. This is six dollars itself. Um, all these are like two to three dollars or three to four dollars. So we got just say twelve dollars worth of stuff right here, and then six should be right on the money for twenty. I'll keep y'all updated. See how we did. All right, we did it for twenty-two dollars. That's not bad. I'm. 
completely content with twenty two dollars. You know, when you're spending money on fish and lures, normally it's up into at least me personally, it goes into like over fifty. So anytime that I leave a store, anytime I leave a store after I've been shopping in a fishing section and I've spent less than fifty dollars, it's almost like I didn't spend any money in like the grand scheme of things. So we got our twenty two dollars worth of stuff. We're gonna go hit the pond. I still have no clue what pond we're gonna go to, but. I think I have good enough stuff to where it doesn't really matter where we go to. Any pond that we go to, we should be able to pull out some good old big old big mouth bass. And we're going to be on the autopilot today. I can tell you what pond we're not going to go to is the one we just left from because that one absolutely sucked today. I think that was probably the worst trip. Well, I have, I did go seven hours and got skunked off for seven hours, but that was probably the most disappointing trip because I was expecting to go out there and be like, oh, I'll catch eight in an hour and like, for the rest of the day, we're just gonna go and sit at a restaurant and eat chips and salsa. Cause life is so easy, but I got humbled quick today. I got humbled. I will see y'all in the next frame at the pond. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we are here. This is the PB pond, the pond where I caught my personal best, a 9-3 out of. And it's also like gin clear. Like I don't think I've ever, this is definitely the clearest I've seen it on the kayak or being able to get on the kayak in it. So pretty excited. Oh. What was I saying? Pretty excited. Oh, left the paddle, of course. I mean, we do have the ugly stick, so. Ah, gosh. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so it took me a minute to get in. I've left the kill switch somehow. Probably should plug that in if you wanna, you know, get out and fish a little bit. All right, um, do we start moving baits or do we start Texas rigs first? I think we start with the slower stuff first and then we work our way to the moving bait. So we have flukes, which is, you know, kind of soft plastic kind of moving bait. And we also have Senkos. So, um, did we bring the terminal box? Yes, we did. So I'm thinking we start off with the Senko's weightless on this rod right here. We're gonna take this money badger off of here. Nice, easy, simple, weightless presentation. It's basically a Texas rig without the weight. A small hook. Don't ask me why. I've been using a smaller hook here recently, like a definitely undersized hook. It seems like I've definitely been getting more bites. Like a couple of videos ago, I went and fished a golf course pond and was fishing bluegill beds. I'm not sure if that's came out yet. I think it has. Um, but it was something about like just throwing a smaller hook with a bigger bait. Like this is a little one out, I'm pretty sure. And I was getting bit and it seemed like I was getting bit a lot more often, especially like fishing ponds that get a little bit more pressure than, you know, like if you have like your granddad's pond, it might not make that big of a difference. But I think just something about like that smaller presentation or smaller hook sometimes, sometimes can make a difference. It's not a guaranteed thing if you try it and don't catch anything then don't come hating but just one of those things might be worth a shot maybe even throwing a little bit lighter line than what you normally throw all right that looks pretty good to me oh yeah and i'm pretty sure this is that fast gear ratio reel too yep eight one to one this isn't necessarily where i want to start off at but we'll start right here because this is where the first cast was at I haven't seen too many bass where I put in that there was a whole bunch of bass and bluegill but just as clear as the water as you think you or I think you'd be able to see them just cruising around but once I stand up there might be a different store this looks like I should have got something with like some chartreuse to it so you said a super super slow fall rate all right just so we can go ahead and try to get these crossed off I'm gonna go to where I think there should be some fish there's like a little back pocket over here that has a couple of trees and stuff on it so we're gonna go over here and try that. Um, and then from there, we're gonna be freestyling because I haven't been out here in probably a couple months, so. Well, yeah, it's been a minute. I don't know if I came out here during April or near like spawning season when I probably should have been out here. I'm really excited for this video today just because this is all stuff that I used to do, like every day, like pretty persistently. So if three year ago me could compete against me today, like he probably would be on the bank and whooping my tail, probably at about four or five fish by now. Because, I mean, I had lizards, uh, Senkos, and, like, rattle traps just dialed in. And then I discovered, like, crankbaits, and I went through a whole crankbait phase. And I was buying, like, a little $2 jawbone because they would be, like, 
five for 10, maybe the Jawbone branded from Dick's. They were horrible. You catch like three or four fish on them or you'd open up your tackle box and they'd all just be rusted out. But definitely a good get the job done lure. And I tell y'all what, this kayak sure is fun, but it seems like it needs an extra seven mile an hour sometimes. See, if I can get it to go straight, I feel like we could probably hit four mile an hour. So we're at 3.6. bluegill on it no that's a small bass at it a tiny bass at that. oh there's so many bluegill back here i've had probably about four or five bluegill bites already then that was, I think that was the bass. That one felt a little bit bigger, but I think the problem that we're going to run into in here is there's so many like small, small bass that it kind of makes it a little difficult to really, you know, hook any of them or even get a good one to hook. See, like there is a bite right there. I can see bluegill behind it now. I feel like there's going to be a lot of that today. It's going to be frustrating, but we're going to figure it out. Probably gonna be a grind, the fluke and the Oh, oh, did we hook it? Oh little bass, let's go. Let's go. Hey, that's the that's that's the keeper. Oh, lost my worm. It's okay. Got me ready for the fluke. I'll take it. Let's go. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Gonna spot lock it up right here. Awesome, dude. Thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, we didn't have any shortage of bites. It was just, was were any of them gonna actually be able to eat it truly? And that bass was. So now we're gonna switch over to the fluke. When I used to fish flukes, I used to use like a belly weighted hook, which is just the same exact hook with like a little lead weight right here. It just makes it fall a little bit faster and you can fish a little bit faster. But since we already have this hook right here tied on, we're just gonna roll with it. Cause I mean, it should, I think the weightless presentation in here should be just enough, especially where we're at right now. It's pretty shallow back in here. So we're going to try it as is. Let's see how big are these? Hey, <laughs> number two on the fluke, baby. That's not a big one. We're going to try to upgrade this one. Actually, actually, I learned my lesson about trying to upgrade. I spent a little bit of time this morning trying to fish a frog and upgrade a fish. So since we have two on each of, our, each of our soft plastic lures, even though they're not the craziest fish in the world, we are going to um, go ahead and tie on the other ones and try to go ahead and complete the challenge first and then worry about upgrading. I think that's gonna be my new philosophy. We're gonna finish what we start and then we're gonna like go on to, you know, trying to catch a bigger one. Because if we find somewhere where they're biting that after this morning, this morning really had me shaking, guys. You know, we talk about it sometimes on the channel. Like, you can have four or five good days in a row, but that first bad day that you have, it's like it just throws your confidence completely off. And, like, I know it's all, you know, it's all in your head. Like, okay, I didn't lose anything today. Like, I'm not, like, I didn't lose any knowledge about bass fishing. It just didn't work out. Then also the bad thing about, like, doing YouTube is, like, okay, if it's a challenge video and you're trying to fish, like, with a squid, then you really feel bad because like, man, I was catching them yesterday on that frog and they were perfect. I don't know, mind games. This fluke looks so good in the water. It's like, shoo, shoo. I need to get back to, oh, 180 while I'm swimming it. That's a better, oh no, he got off. That was a dang good one. I was swimming it back in, trying to get another cast with it and one came up, oh, he's still right there. He's still right there. Might be able to get him to eat it again. That was a pretty good one too. That was a. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, he's looking at it. He's looking at it, he's looking at it, he's looking at it. He's literally right there. Got him, got him, got him. <laughs> this is insane, this is insane. That's a better one. That's a little bit bigger one than the first one. That's an upgrade. Awesome. <laughs> he was literally right here and I was swimming it in, gonna get like one more cast and he ate it on the swim in. I hooked him pretty good and then this time, or the second cast, I just like flipped it over in there, didn't fix it on the hook or anything and he ate it again. So we will take it, sir. Thank you. 
Looks pretty good. Sorry. Right. Look at that. Check that out. Boom, baby. Let's go. Awesome. That was cool. All right. So we upgraded the fluke fish already. We can go on from this. Okay. So now the question becomes, do we tie on the crankbait? Like, do we do crankbait and rattle trap on these two rods or do we leave the fluke on just in case we want to throw it again? <sighs> decisions, decisions. I stress about stuff like that and other people have like real stressors. Oh, that's pretty cool. It comes with like how to tie it and little tips and tricks about the lure. That's pretty cool. I like that Ozark Trail. Like what not to tie, how it's gonna look in the water. Huh, that's pretty clutch. More companies should do that. That's probably smart for them because I'd say Ozark Trail is more like beginner. Mr. Bass, this thing. Oh, there we go. Is that a bass? Oh my gosh. Small one came off. Okay, cool. We'll take it. <laughs> that one was super small. That would have been small for the day, probably. All right, we got to upgrade some fish sizes here in a second because you know we catch the biggest bass on YouTube this way. Might not be every video, but we're going to see a big one at least. We're going to make y'all think we caught a big one. Just kidding. Oh, what happened to our crankbait? Why is it not doing what it's supposed to do? There it goes. No, it's not. What is going on? I think it's probably just that small, narrow bill. I don't know why it doesn't feel like a normal crankbait. Oh, right there. I saw that one come up and eat it. Yes, sir. Thank you for just kind of giving up on it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Now, don't go crazy when you get over here to me, though. Just complimented you. Check that out. That is a fish. Crankbait fish. Let's go. All right. So now we're going to cut this off. If it takes us a minute to catch one on that war pig, it's going to be perfect because by the time we do catch one on it, it's going to be like perfect spinnerbait time. And these clouds start kind of rolling in a little bit and we get a little bit of wind. It's supposed to rain tonight, I want to say. So that could set us up good for a you know, little spinnerbait evening. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Hey, that's a big one. That's a little upgrade. Okay, do you need to go back in the water and chill out a little bit? Because I will do that if that means you're not going to try to hook me. Okay, you good now? Everybody calm? I do not have pliers either with me. Oh, well. There we go. There's another one. Boom. I don't see you. Okay, so we're going to cut. Ouch. Cut that off now. And now we need the lipless. I found these because rattle traps get expensive. And you know, you kind of go through a phase where you really don't know what you're doing. You're kind of still learning knots and whatnot. So you kind of, you tie it different every time. You think you're tying it right, but like it's definitely your knot that's breaking, but you just don't want to admit it. That was me. So <laughs> uh, I found these because they used to be like 288, I want to say a piece. So get paid from Hibbit, go buy five to 10 of these. <laughs> And then I'd be stacked up for the month. And I always used to get either like the chrome, like the straight chrome, or I'd switch up. And sometimes I'd buy this one right here. Oh, it feels so good. I'm on an autopilot fishing like these lures that I used to fish. This is so wholesome for me. And I get a lot of like, oh, there, you inspired me to make a channel. Like, good. Let me inspire you to like actually be consistent with the channel because all this, like everything is so possible. Like, especially in the world we live in today. Like, yeah, everything takes a little bit of work or a lot of work or kind of like an insane amount of work to really, you know, do something how you want to do it. But you can do it. You can do it. A little bit of inspiration for you today. Anything that you want to do, if you want to do it bad enough, you can do it. If it's a channel, even if it's not a fishing channel, you got to think there's a million other people that are interested in whatever you're interested in. You just have to find those million people. That's how it's broken down to me. There's probably more than a million and there's probably a million or a hundred thousand people that like you. You just have to find your hundred thousand people that love you. And then once you find them, you're pretty much good. Oh my goodness, we had so many followers right there. I mean, I'm kind of like four or five bluegill and then there's a bass like following the bluegill in. All right, what are we gonna do here? What are we gonna do? We're gonna cast this out there. We should have got like a size up one that was a little bit more heavy than this one because this one is fairly light. So with liplessness, the I feel like the most common retrieve is just kind of like a constant retrieve, like to where you, you know, just hold your rod down, kind of like a crankbait and just reel it back in, which that is a great way to catch fish, don't get me wrong. But one thing that I really like to do, just to switch it up sometimes if that's not working for whatever reason, is just hitting them with a nice little yo-yo. I probably say this every time I fish a lipless, but 
just lifting your rod up like that and then letting it naturally fall down sometimes your hooks will get tangled up in your line but but if you kind of give it like a quick little pop sometimes you can get it out and then also that quick little pop good to just attract fish because the lipless is almost like the ultimate lure vibrates has a whole bunch of flash and then it's like a moving bait so like they have to chase it I feel like they found it so also guys what do y'all think about uh live scope i really have been contemplating it i've been watching a few videos on like kayak setups especially this is going to be a tournament kayak for me um i was going to take out the native today but i broke the spectra cord i think it's called spectra cable some steering cable it's kind of frustrating so i put it in put it on punishment and left it at the house today um well i had to because i didn't have a way to steer it so that's the cool thing about fishing you can come up with like a whole new cadence if you come up with it you get to name it so we're gonna call this one the big mouth bass we're just big mouth bassing it along probably have to catch one before you can name the cadence should we name it big mouth bass or should we name it the fish them hard I like the fish hard. We're gonna name it the fish hard. Watch this. We're gonna fish them hard. Fish them. Oh, there we go. See? See? We fished them hard. One. We fished hard. Yeah. Now we're gonna call it this one. The Larry catches the biggest bass move. Oh, huge catfish! Huge catfish! Did he swam like he was gonna try to eat my bass? Oh, there's more. Oh, what's, what else do I have to know? I have this other. Let's watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, there's another, there's like three or four bass right here. All looking at my, oh, oh don't go in the water, Rob. Don't go in the water, stop. Okay, we got our right hand. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna double up. Y'all just wait. Oh, doubled up, doubled up, doubled up, doubled up. already. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna put this one here. And then we're gonna fight this one because he's bigger. <laughs> oh snap. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the Berkeley War Pig got a, ate a lot faster than that other one did. I'm just saying, while we were doing the fish him hard retrieve. That's a cool clip. Somebody clip that and make it a short for me. I wish I had pliers for this one. Oh, sorry, dude. I know that front of that kayak's hot. Just give me one second. I'll be quick. Okay, there's fish number one. Gonna <laughs> put that one back. Okay, and here's fish number two. I'm so sorry, dude. I did not mean to. I didn't even think about putting you on the front of the kayak. Sorry. How about that? I mean, instantly. The second I dropped it down there, one ate it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start doing that. Whenever I go out fishing, I'm gonna rig up two of the same rod, no matter what it is. Oh, now I wanna catch another one that war pig. We're gonna fish them hard another one. Now we can name that, can't we? What do we call it? Fish them hard? Do we call that retrieve the fish them hard? Do we call it the big mouth bass? I don't care if it looks like a jerkbait retrieve. I'm doing it with a lipless, so it's not a jerkbait retrieve. That was cool. That you gotta you gotta give me a thumbs up for that. You gotta you gotta drop a like on the video because I just doubled up with two rods in my hand. I just don't know. I've never fished a spinnerbait in here. We do have a slight breeze coming in and also, these clouds are kind of making it, you know, cloudy one second and then sunny the next. So the clouds definitely should help with this. Like the weather's not necessarily desirable for a spinnerbait, but it's definitely getting to that point. Several song-filled hours later. Oh my gosh, another snapping turtle. Well, we're probably not gonna get this back. So um, I was recording, like pre-recording a Vlogmas video and I caught one of these and we just caught a snapping turtle on the spinnerbait. <sighs> That's no good. Sunny.
telling you is your name Gohan. Go ask when it come to the hitters. Got dummy bars, punk. Just big rocks in the ring, spotted from so far. Nicked actors when they see me wanna tell me they could be me. No, it's lies. Surprise when I say try it. But I'm not trying to hear your pride, Bruce. Slide when you run right back to that place in your feels, alright? Slim.